The next thing we'll review on the MRI scans is a fibular collateral ligament tear. It's also called a lateral collateral ligament tear. And we'll go through the MRI sequences and show how it differentiates compared to a complete posterior lateral corner injury on this circumstance. Most of the time an FCL tear may not be in isolation. So the first imaging sequence that we'll go through is a coronal fat saturation view showing some of the, the edema that occurs. So this is a patient we started with a right knee here and on the more right side of the screen here is where this patient has an MCL tear also. And we'll focus on the lateral side. And this is the meniscal tibial portion of the lateral capsule. Here's the lateral meniscus. This is the inferior lateral genicular artery. And as we course up more anterior to that, we can start to see more edema. So that's what this white fluid is within the substance. And we'll start to see a little bit of disruption here of the FCL attachment site on the femur. And we can start to see the popliteus tendon here. As we course further down, we can start to see the waviness that you'd see with an FCL tear. And the popliteus tendon itself looks normal. As we course further down, we'll start to see some of the biceps femoris. And once again, this is some of the waviness we'd see from an FCL that's been disrupted and not in continuity. And then this is the biceps femoris coming down and attaching on the fibular head with the direct arm of the short head, direct arm of the long head, and is the anterior arm of the long head, the biceps, where they attach in the fibular styloid. You can see them coming down through here. This is the popliteal fibular ligament. And as we go down a little further, we'll see the popliteus muscular tendinous junction. So the posterior lateral corner is injured, but it doesn't include the popliteus tendon or the popliteal fibular ligament in this circumstance, with the primary injury being the fibular collateral ligament. The next imaging sequence that we'll look at is a sagittal view. On the sagittal view, sometimes it'll allow us to capture the view of an injured FCL. So we look at the biceps femoris along here, and this is the course of the FCL. We can see some edema within the substance, especially at its femoral attachment site. And as it comes down, we can see some thickening, which would be evidence with tearing and some decreased signal within the substance of the fibular collateral ligament. So this is another way to look at an FCL tear if we can't see it very well in the coronal images. It's a thin structure and sometimes the MRI may miss it. And using the sagittal images also can help us to differentiate a tear. Now as we start to course down further, we'll start to see some of the popliteus tendon as it courses here. Here's the lateral meniscus. We can see a bone bruise here from an ACL tear. And as we go to the center of the knee, we can see that there's an ACL disruption here. So here's the tibial attachment site and it's been torn off the femur. But the PCL itself looks normal. So here's a normal curvature and shape of the PCL. And as we go more towards the midline, we'll start to see the medial meniscus. And we can see the edema that would occur from a tear of the medial structure. So this is the adductor magnus tendon. And as we course even over more medial, we can see the edema on this view. The final thing that we'll go through is the axial view. I don't find the axial view is that good for looking at the posterior lateral corner structures other than looking at the popliteus tendon. So if we see some swelling within the substance of the popliteus muscle on the tibia down here, we have to be more concerned that there may be a popliteus disruption, either at the muscular tendinous junction or it may be torn off the femur. So there's a little bit of swelling here, but there's not a great deal of swelling. And as we course more proximal, this is at the level of the joint. We start to see the FCL and the substance here. It's a little difficult to tell if it's torn or not. Here's the ghosting of the lateral meniscus. This is the anterior intermeniscal ligament. And then this is the outline of the medial meniscus. And as we course more proximal, we can start to see the ACL where it's been disrupted. And we can see the patella sitting within the confines of the trochlear groove. So once again, it's a little harder to see the FCL tear on this axial view, but it can give us some indications of other structures that may be injured with it.